Hello and welcome to another Doctor's Assistant 1 video and today I'm taking a look at the third Doctor issue um, 4 out of 5 so unfortunately this is the second to last one and I say unfortunately because this series has been stellar personally um, but yeah, uh, you have this awesome cover of John Pertwee here looking like a badass as usual and then Joe Grant in the background and then this sort of ominous purple like lighting and that You've got the TARDIS barcode with 04 telling you that it's the fourth issue. Uh, cover A, Titan Comics there, Doctor Who, um, Doctor Who there, John Pertwee there, writer and uh, colorist and letterist, I think, or some, some of the people who worked on it. New Adventures with the third Doctor. On the back, you've got a random thing about digital Doctor Mysterio thing. Uh, Doctor Who shop. Uh, you've got behind the scenes sort of like panel like of where they just drew the thing the fact that you can get the stuff these comics digitally and that the alternative covers which I quite I quite like both these alternative covers to be honest um, I think I prefer that one but I don't mind that one too much uh, then you've got an advertisement for the Brigadier book series thing another behind the scenes type thing uh, what's out this month from Titan Comics in terms of Doctor Who stuff? So, uh, the next issue when it's coming out, which is February, and a little bio on what is going to happen in the next issue, and then all the alternative covers and stuff. And to my knowledge, that'll be the standard cover, which is cool because I absolutely adore that cover. I quite like these two covers actually as well. I really don't like that one. Um, don't really care for that one either, but. Yeah, um, then you've got the title of the uh, story, part four, the writer, colorist, letterists, and artist. And I absolutely adore this one, it's such a good one. I mean, look at that, that is just stunning artwork on their part, you know, just such a... It just feels like it would work as such a good televised episode of John Pertwee's era. It just, it, feel, it fits into that, um, that sort of era really thematically well um, and I always forget these these days but you've got the bio on Joe Grant the Doctor the Brigadier and then you've got the sort of previously what happened previously in the last issue so if you for some reason just started with this is issue you can be caught up quickly with that you've got Titan Comics website Twitter and Facebook so you can sort of give them feedback if you want to um, as I like to think this is how I'm kind of giving them feedback but yeah as I was saying here, yeah, this is just such a nice sort of set piece and a and a sort of action piece, you know. Um, and again, it just it really does feel like it would fit really well in the sort of thematic, thematically well and sort of in chronological order with a lot of other Third Doctor stories, you know. You've got bits where the Third Doctor's karateing someone, karate, karateing someone even, um, and then you've got big robots shooting missiles and stuff, and, and weird energy beams, and then you've got iconic sort of shots slash panels, in, in, in the case of a comic book, where you've got like the jeep, a unit jeep, and some unit shots, so yeah, soldiers and stuff, and then you've got Bessie in the background and that, just iconic imagery there. Um, you know, you've got all sorts of bits and pieces, again, you've got machinery there bur burrowing into the, the ground and you've got screens with like information of the doctor's brain and you've got like the time vortex which I love here because it's even done in the sort of same way as John Pertwee's time vortex you know um, when spoiler alert but Salamander's falling through uh, what seems to be the TARDIS but maybe it's his own time vessel I mean I was a little bit confused as to what was happening in this sort of part the cliffhanger is just insanely good as well. Like, wow, what, a, what, a, what a corker of a uh, <laughs> cliffhanger! And then I love the fact that he's kind of got a nosebleed. I was rather shocked at that as well. I was like, wait, what? And this thing seems to be uh, something. That it kind of reminds me of something that I've seen, uh, it, uh, like on a box set for a third Doctor story. And then you've got a pterodactyl. Because why not? You are travelling in the time vortex. And I just, as I say, I really like the fact that they've done it in a way where uh, it's reminiscent of the Third Doctor's title sequence. Because they could have been really lazy and sloppy and for some reason used one of the more modern series Doctor Who title sequences. 
and that for the Time Vortex, because I think the one that sticks into my head vividly as a realistic, what I imagine the Time Vortex to be like, so whenever, like, they're on about it in the Time War, uh, and in the War Doctor box sets recently, I've always pictured the Vortex, the Time Vortex, for me anyway, as a fan, as the sort of Chris Eccleston sort of, um, Chris Eccleston, like David Tennant one, you know, that sort of reddish blue one, mainly because I've really grown up with that one, and I think that one just... I don't know why, but feels like a time vortex, what I imagine time vortex to actually be like. Uh, the time vortex being sort of a sort of time tunnel, almost like a, um, a wormhole that allows you to go from one uh, period of time to another. And then you've got these little bits of time war technology, and I like how the Master later on even says to the Doctor, you know, I would... Um, I would much prefer us to work together than have another Time Lord, um, you know, sort of stealing uh, the plans and stuff for us and that. And so the, the Master and, and the Doctor se seem to be working together. Here we have the Doctor sort of, you know, get really angry and stuff. And then it makes for some interesting dialogue here because Joe Grant's like, whoa, I've never seen you like this Doctor. And I guess in retrospect, that does actually raise the quite interesting um, sort of uh, uh, theory in my head that actually, well it's not so much a theory, but it raises the the question that actually, yeah, the Third Doctor wasn't that aggressive or angry a lot of the time, uh, and that, to my knowledge anyway, I don't think he was ever angry towards his companions anyway, or like, out and out angry. He was always sort of maybe uh, annoyed if, he, he wouldn't suffer fools gladly basically, he would be angry if you were, you know, being arrogant and stubborn and, and, and sort of narrow-minded, basically. I love this bit with the uh, Master with his shrink ray thing. I always forget the name of it, but here we see him shrink someone down, and it's just eerie as hell, you know. I love him using that because I think, I can't remember, but I think in the Third Doctor's era, it's not even really introduced, but to be fair, I'm fine with that. You know that it's been used here because it it works well, and I love that gadget. And I can imagine the master using it quite a few times. You know when he's annoyed with people, or not when he's annoyed with people, but when he needs to get you know uh, to a further goal. You know, like when the doctor uses um, you know the karate, the karate on people. You know, he only uses it to get you know beyond a place. You know, like when. This guy's, like, literally saying, oh, you can't get past here. And then he's like, hi, whoopsh. And then, like, you know, he's attacking him and that. Uh, that's how the Master uses his, like, shrink ray of sorts. You know, he's wanting to get further on into a building or further on, uh, further ahead in his Master plan, so to speak. And if there's someone in the way, well, he's going to use his shrink ray. So the difference being that's a little bit more harsh <laughs> than the Doctor... Uh, karate -ing you and you being unconscious. Um, but yeah, if you're any bit the Third Doctor fan, it's obviously a no-brainer. You should definitely pick this one up, as it just feels so right. It just feels like one of those really good sort of early season seven slash season eight uh, jumper twee era type stories, you know, um, and that probably more season eight than season seven, considering obviously it's got Joe Grant and not Liz Shaw. Um, and I mean, if they were to continue this series, that would be a nice thing if they did one with Liz Shaw, because I think she was really underused in the classic series and had a lot more potential than uh, what she was given, unfortunately. Um, but I mean, I'm not complaining about Joe Grant. Joe Grant is amazing, and I've met Katie Manning, and she was absolutely, you know, very, very nice, you know, absolutely, you know, sweet as hell and, and really gentle and nice woman. Uh, but yeah... Uh, thanks for watching, comment, rate and subscribe.